Welcome to the trailer build. We are going to be setting up a brand new 22 by 7 by 7 full aluminum enclosed trailer to haul side by sides. All right, here's the trailer I'm replacing. Looks a little rough, but it's not. Mechanically, it's really solid. It is a wicked trailer. I used it for my drift car. That's originally what I built the tire rack for. And um, I use it for my Razor, my uh, track car. It's such a versatile trailer. It tows really well. Pull these batteries out, and then I'll show you guys the setup. I'm guessing we can cannibalize most of this setup to transfer over into the new trailer. All right, batteries are out. Some power lube. This stuff works great. Just spray them down and get them looking fresh. Then we'll test fit them in the trailer. That battery's looking new. I just built a little tray off the ground with wood. It may not look the prettiest, but it's functional and you can't see any of this because it's all gonna be behind the toolbox and under the table here. So I'm gonna build a little shelf above them and that's where I'm gonna mount my charger as well as my power inverter. That'll just be like the electrical area. A cut out there, cut out up here in the corner. A lot of my wiring will run down there. Put a lip on that one so things don't slide down. My top can slide out. Sandwiched in between two pieces there. If we're doing any work, I can pull that table off and get easy access to the batteries or the power inverter without actually having to move the toolbox and stuff like that. It's just a work surface, it's not for hammering on. Gotta wire up my batteries now, so I'm gonna connect the positive and the positive with the cable and the negative with the negative. So we're basically doubling the capacity of these batteries. Before final assembly and everything, I'm gonna paint all this wood gray as well so that it matches the rest of the trailer. Once I've got this out of the way, I wanted to get this wiring kind of at least situated where it's supposed to be. And then I can start doing the LED lighting. Uh, I wanted the table in the shelf there so that I knew like where to position my front light. These are the lights that I got on Amazon. They come in a 10 pack. These are the four foot ones. They come in eight foot lengths as well. They're a good deal. I'll leave a link in the description to the ones that I got. Um, Cause I looked through a bunch of different ones before I ordered these and these ones had really good reviews and a, a really solid price for what you get. They're very easy to mount and they look quite well made. All right, we got the first three lights mounted and boy oh boy do they give off a lot of light. I'll have one more to the back. So three along each side. There'll be one horizontal in the back. There's a horizontal in the front. They mount really easy. It's just this clip and it clips onto the aluminum body of the light. It just clips on here on that ridge and it lets you easily adjust them. I just screw them into the aluminum beams there, two of them on each light and it lets you adjust like where you want the light as well, which is nice. Oh yeah, look at that. So we got seven lights mounted so far out of the total eight that are going up on the ceiling and it is bright in here. Really, really nice. Once I'm done installing the rest of them, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Super stoked with the way these lights are mounting and how much light they're putting out, it's great. All right, got the heater kind of in place there. I'm not working on that yet. The prize with it's super lightweight, comes with all the plumbing and stuff. I'll show you all that later though. So we got the batteries mostly wired up, the charger in place now. There's only like 40-ish dollars on on Amazon had good reviews. Got this power inverter on Amazon as well. 1200 watt, it says 2400 peak, but all the reviews say it's more like 1300 peak and it shuts down, but I don't, really don't care. I probably won't be using all that. So I'll show you more on that later. Six way, 12 volt uh, distribution block here. So the heater is gonna run off one of those. And then in the future, if I need any more 12 volt accessories, I'll easily be able to tie into that. Right now I'm doing some high end wiring. So I just ran an extension cord up the trailer here. The reason I set it up here is it's gonna be nice to open the trailer and then just flip the lights on so you can see what you're doing. And on this side, by the man door, we'll have a switch as well. Realistically, that's more than enough for what I need here. So it's overkill anyways. It's easy, it's weather resistant. The cable, the upper shelf, um, and then the power inverter and all that wiring is done pretty much now. Five to. 20 amp smart charger for the battery bank when we're running grid power or the generator. I gotta mount the diesel heater off the ground still. 
and then we'll plumb the exhaust out the wall, but we'll show that later. So we'll get that in place and see how everything fits and lines up. The workbench and the shelf placed. It's time to push the toolbox into place and, and do kind of like a test fit. This is almost all buttoned up now and done. So I'm gonna mount the heater on some wood and lift it up off the ground a little bit, and then we'll plumb it all. We use the through haul exhaust set up here. That's all you can hear. It's just a little bit of hot air rushing out the side. I've had the heater on for about an hour on low. And it's at 18 Celsius right now. The ambient temperature in the room, 17, 18. And uh, there you can see 118 Celsius is the air coming out of the heater. That's on low. It gets up to close to 200 on high. You can see the exhaust coming out there and out the side. Yeah, it does get hot, but don't plan on touching it. We got the air intake right there. And you can hear how quiet it is. It actually moves a lot more air than I thought it would. It's warm all through the trailer. I am gonna install a fan up in the ceiling, like up there somewhere to move some more air. You're also probably seeing here, I've got my microwave set up on a little shelf. I'm also gonna put a toaster oven up on top there. We got the kitchen area here, the pantry, a kettle, all the necessities, some plates, stuff like that. Some more storage here that we can use for food and treats and stuff like that. I got the top shelf done up there for for odds and ends. A couple shelves here, some tools, the, um, the workbench, the main toolbox. We've got our 2000 watt inverter generator for the stuff that the battery bank can't handle or to charge it. The next step is I'm gonna install the NOCO plug port here. Uh, basically the same way I installed the through haul exhaust. And then that'll allow us to plug into an extension cord at home or on a campsite or to the generator and that'll feed directly into a splitter. And off that splitter, I'll have the battery charger to the battery bank there. And then we'll also have two outlets directly from the generator. Uh, running stuff like the toaster oven is gonna be about 1500 watts. That's a little more than I need to run off my battery bank and my, my inverter is only 1200 watts, a pure sign inverter. I didn't really need more. I know I've got the, the generator for that bigger stuff. However, the 700 watt little microwave from Walmart here, just a $69 microwave, can easily happily run off the battery bank. This one bank of lights right here, those four lights run about 120 watts total. 120 watts coming out of it with the lights. When we're away somewhere, the only thing I'm gonna be running off the batteries most of the time is gonna be just the lighting and charging stuff. So I don't really have to worry about too much strain on the batteries. If I need to use more juice, I'll be firing up that generator. Don't get all caught up with solar and battery banks unless you really, really plan on going off grid and that's what you want to do. Bang for buck, you're still better off with a little generator in most cases. I'm gonna keep picking away at things. I got a few more things to add, uh, a few more things to button up, and uh, we'll give you a little bit of an update in a, in, in a little bit once I make some progress. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, then head on over to our Shopify store and check out our sweet custom swag. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and you can also follow along on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. In the next video, we'll be adding some more finishing touches, talking about battery bank options, installing e-track on the floor, and loading the razor for the first time.